said 35. Hello everyone and welcome to Volku Shafe podcast. My name is Magdalena and this is my little kitty co-host Tomarat. Meow. This is episode 35 and we have a Monday, October the 10th of 2016. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, this is a knitting, spinning and dyeing podcast uh, in the little town of Adlisville near Zurich in Switzerland. Uh, just yesterday, um, a festival in Zurich, Swiss Wooler Festival, uh, ended and I vended there. So that's why I have these empty shelves. <laughs> it's not like I sold everything I brought, it just uh, all my skeins are still uh, packed and I will have to unload them but for now it's just it's just this <laughs> and yay um, it was amazing an, an amazing experience I will be talking about the festival uh, later on the episode I just wanted to say thank you thank you to everyone who came to me and said hello and who stopped by my booth to everyone who bought my yarn that means so much really and I really really hope to see your projects made from my yarn it will be really exciting to see um, and yeah uh, let's start today. I have a lot of finished objects to show you. How amazing is that? That doesn't happen that often, does it? And no socks there. It's like not a small project. <laughs> uh, okay, so first up, I will show you my finished unicorn. Hello! Hello! So yes, last episode she was almost done. I just had to do the mane and the tail. And now it's finished. I used a variety of yarns. I had like scrap yarn from other projects or or my hand spot. Sorry, I just heard the neighbor um, making some noise. Uh, <laughs> so some uh, scrap yarns. <laughs> that uh, I had and my hand spuns that I spun in little amounts and yeah I just wanted to make it a crazy rainbow and that's what I did and funnily enough uh, whenever I take a strand out of this mane I know exactly what yarn this is so uh, yeah it's it's my cozy memories unicorn <laughs> <laughs> and the pattern, by the way, is Nila the Unicorn by Rachel Borello Carroll. And yes, I love my unicorn. And the yarn uh, I used for uh, the main color is my hand dyed yarn Wolfenschafe Romulus, which is uh, Merino Superwash on worsted, in worsted weight, and the colorway is Silver Towers. So this is her and she was with me at the festival so if you were there you could see her and next up yeah um, you might have noticed that I'm wearing a sweater so I will just stand up a bit I won't be able to show you everything but do 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 my middle sweater is done and I actually finished it uh, before the festival, but it was just, uh, I washed it and it was blocking, so um, it, it got dry just yesterday. And I put it on me just yesterday evening, and it turns out that it's really long. I don't think I can even I stand on my... Uh, yeah, see? It is long. And I was aware that the bee stitch, oh, pattern, yeah. Pattern, by the way, is Mira by Justyna Lorkowska. <laughs> and I used Malabrigo Mechita, Mechita, 
I never know how to say it, um, in the Sirena's color way. So anyway, um, the B stitch that is used for the body of the sweater, when you wash it, it's like a chain mail, you know, it just I was aware that it should, it would uh, get longer, but it got much longer than I expected. I mean, um, I followed the pattern, so I did it to the like proper length according to the pattern. But then again, I'm a loose knitter, so it grew probably more than uh, <laughs> expected. But I don't mind. It's kind of nice. It's um, nice and cozy. It's also kind of loose on me. Well, it it is uh, meant to have the uh, positive ease there and the sleeves are just uh, keeping things in check. I'd say it's a little bit too loose. And why the short sleeves? I mean, not the uh, full sleeves. Um, so I was knitting happily on my sleeve and being close to finishing it, when I realized, wait a moment, will I have enough yarn for two full sleeves? And then I weighed my yarn and it seemed that it might not be necessarily the case. So I ripped back like around this much of the sleeve of, of this sleeve and decided to make them like well, something between half and three quarters, and it's nice. I like wearing it at home because usually I have sweaters with long sleeves, and whenever I want to do something at home, I have to, you know, pull them back. But it's not a problem with this one, and yeah, I I love it. I wish it was a bit smaller, but then again, I will. Um, have like I've learned a lesson from this knitting and I hope that every sweat the, every next sweater I make will be better fitted. <laughs> Funnily enough, the sweater that fitted me the best was not knitted for me. It was knitted for my friend. I mean the Rombai cardigan by Terry Crews. And it was it just fit like a glove, but then I had to give it away because it was not for me. <laughs> Oh yeah, but anyway, I knitted it on uh, 3.75 millimeter needles and the ribbing on the sleeves and on the collar and the ribbing down the uh, at the bottom of the sweater on 3.5. So 3.5 millimeters, it's US size 4, so it makes uh, 3.75 US size 5. And I'm so happy that I'm done because it took me ages. I actually checked on my Ravelry page that I did not start it last October. I started it, I think, in January, but it's still nine long months. It's like pregnancy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think I'm ready to cast on a new sweater. Totally. And I actually have something on my mind, but I will tell you later. Once I've cast uh, cast on, then then I can start talking because maybe maybe I will choose some other pattern in the end. We will see. But I even have an idea for the yarn. Well, anyway, <laughs> this is my second finished object, and the third finished object, which was. Uh, which has been finished for quite a while, but I did not get the opportunity to show it to you because it was not blocked. I blocked it for the festival, finally. And it's again by Justyna Lorkowska, uh, Ashling Shawl. Do, do, do. Yay! Isn't this lo just lovely? And as I said, I uh, I skipped one section of of the raindrops, and I think I did the right choice because I didn't want a really large shawl. 
and it's large enough for me definitely so yay this is my Ashley and those of you who were at the festival could see it because she was there she I'm sorry we Polish people we sometimes use he or she on objects because that's what we do in our language uh, anyway these are my three finished objects how amazing is that and again the yarn that I used was my hand dyed yarn and uh, teal here is uh, Wolfenschaffe Paw in uh, Vodnik colorway and the applied border is on my Belladonna base in honey colorway. Mm, so I have some works in progress of course and for the festival I took something to occupy me when there's like less people around so yeah so I could occupy myself and I chose a project that wouldn't require much concentration so it's my Arden shawl it's ardent by Janina Kallio and look, it's bigger now! Last week I was here and now I know it doesn't seem like a huge progress but believe me it is because I'm getting every, um, every row I'm getting more and more stitches so yeah 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 sorry for for the noise it's my needle hitting the table and i'm knitting on 3.5 uh, millimeter needles which is us size 4 and these are uh haya haya needles that i bought in japan accidentally i mean it's not like i couldn't get them anywhere else they just happened to be there when i was there <laughs> if that makes any sense but i'm enjoying them these are fixed needles I think they're 80, uh, and, hello, 80 centimeters long, which makes it, just a moment, 32 inches long, the cable. And the yarn that I'm using is my hand spun yarn. And yeah, you can see the cake is much smaller now, but I'm sure I will have plenty left because this skein is over 100 grams and it has like, 550 or 60 meters which is a lot <laughs> and the fiber that I used for spinning was um, Falkland uh, hand dyed by porpoise fur and I made it into a two ply yarn and I love it it's so soft I can't wait to wear this shawl and I love how the sections of the fiber, I mean the sections of the color of the fiber, they uh, show in the, in the knitted fabric. So I'm very happy with that project and it's so exciting to be knitting with my own hand spun. I know for you more advanced spinners it's nothing really special because you probably knit from your hand spun all the time but it's my first real project for my hand spun so I'm like <laughs> really enjoying it and it lives in my a yarn seller studio bag with cute gorgeous girls yay so I have one other project to show you that you actually are familiar with and it's my cozy memories. Um, I don't know how to how to describe the shape of it because it's not a blanket yet. I'm still on the road too, but I did put a, some dent into it. Mm. There are three and a half more squares. So last time I think I was showing you this square. And the next one is uh, Woolen Vine Yarns Neptunia on Blitz Base. And it's, uh, yeah, I still have some left because I made a pair of socks, then, uh, then I made 
Another pair of socks where I used uh, this yarn for uh, toes and cuffs. And I still have some left, so maybe I will pop up some more squares into the blanket later on. The next one is uh, Wolfenschafe Belladonna in honey colorway, which is left over from Ashling. And this uh, dark blue square is from the yarn I got together with my order from Yarn Seller Studio. And it's called Captain Frederick Wentworth, and it's Jane Austen inspired. So I mostly uh, add squares from the yarn I have knitted with, like there are uh, scrap yarns from other project that I made, projects that I made, or uh, they are my hand spun, like this one or this one. <laughs> but I thought this is so special, I will add it here, and also. I have not knitted a project with this yarn, but uh, I was making mini skeins for the festival and I had some left over. I mean, I had a mini mini skein that was not enough uh, because I was selling um, skeins that are 48, uh, 48 meters long and it was like 30 something, so I, I couldn't sell it as like... Um, regular mini skein, so I just kept it for me and I'm I'm just uh, knitting a square with it and it's on my dew base it's Wolfenschafe dew uh, which is 70% baby alpaca and 30% silk and it's so soft and drapey and I love it it's it's really wonderful it's a bit I would say thinner than your regular fingering and I would call it more or less light fingering and uh, the colorway is Soul Society and it's I must tell you it's been quite popular at the festival and well I I understand it because I really love this colorway myself <laughs> and I, I'm actually dreaming about a cardigan or something from this colorway and this yarn Maybe one day. <laughs> so um, this is my knitting and it's for spinning. Oh, I took my kiwi with me to sit on my booth and uh, people were interesting that they were asking whether I painted it myself and I thought, yeah, it was a good idea in the end to take it with me. Um, and I did some spinning because uh, on the first day, um, by the end of the day, there were really not many customers and uh, I thought, yeah, I'm sitting here and I've been only knitting. I mean, I was also selling my yarn, but in between I, what I did was knit. Um, but then I thought, oh, my kiwi is here. I haven't spun in ages. so. I just did some spinning on the festival and where the, oh it's here so this is what I did I had some of my fiber with me and this is it I just started on the dark blue section and it will be turning into turquoise soon and I'm planning on Navajo ply it, applying it so so that I keep um, I keep the color sections. I don't want them to get jumbled. Uh, I just want them to to look more or less like this braid. And it's again by Porpoise Fur, just like this one. And it's uh, Shetland wool. Mm. 113 grams in Delta colorway and I'm in love with it. It's just gorgeous So yay, this is my spinning. I think it should be okay if I um, never apply it so it will make it three ply yarn and around fingering or sport weight so could be also good for a shawl or something. So 
this is it. And next up, acquisitions from the festival, of course. So I did not have that much time to do my own shopping because my husband was taking care of our son, so he couldn't really help me out at the booth. Not to mention that he's really not a specialist on yarn, so he couldn't really advise any customer. <laughs> so I was there most of the time at my booth and just suffering because... Well, no, I was not suffering all the time, but you know, uh, it was it's that feeling that there's so many yummy yarn booths and fiber booths and I just can't walk around in peace and look at them and feel like... Ah. So most of my uh, buying I did on Sunday uh, morning just before the opening and this is what I got. Let's start with this. Yes, I bought a set of beanies and I know I said so many times that for my cozy memories blanket I'm using only uh, leftovers from other projects but I saw this and thought <laughs> I will add this to my blanket simply uh, I wanted this. And uh, the, this is a set of minis uh, by Gabriela Kos and um, she's my friend Claudia she's behind Gabriela Kos yarns and uh, it's uh, Aventino Mini 100% Merino and it's around 73 meters around 20 grams each and yeah I will be adding them to my blanket Claudia, she really likes uh, more muted colors. I used her yarn. I have it here. I used her yarn to do uh, the border in my rombi, rombi sweater. This is cal her Scala base, um, which is sport weight, and this Chinese ink colorway. And I love it. I still have to think about what to do with it. What to do with the rest of it and yay so I grabbed me some minis because I thought this way I will have four of her colorways how awesome <laughs> uh, so yeah this is the first thing that one that set I actually bought on Saturday evening just like my husband arrived with Stasha to pick me up and because there were not many people left around, I just let them sit there and I went to Claudia. <laughs> uh, so I had lovely neighbors, like the booth next to mine was uh, Mulberry Cottage Yarns and I bought two skeins. Ah, it's amazing! So, um, yeah, they were next to me and uh, the artist behind Mulberry Cottage Yarns is Franziska Eitner. And we chatted a bit because when there was like less people, we, we did visit ourselves on our booths. And it was amazing meeting you. I don't know if you're watching, but yeah, it was, I was lucky to have such nice company. And Francisca, she's more of a mm, solid colorway dyer, as opposed to me. Uh, I am in love with variegated yarns. So it was good that we were next to each other, because this way it was not like, oh, the same stuff, same stuff. It was just different. Uh, but of course, she did have some variegated yarn and I... <laughs> of course grabbed it. Uh, so this lovely lovely skein is uh, on her merino sock base which is 100% uh, merino superwash and it's called Night Fire and it has these uh, like warm tones of oranges and browns and little paler reds 
but also um, dark blues, a hint of green. I'm in love with this. And the other one is the same base and it's Jungle Dreams. So it's more of a green and blue mixture. And it's so, so beautiful. And I wouldn't be surprised if I put them also in my blanket somehow, because these are only 50 gram skeins, so it will be something small I make with them. And I will, I could, I could knit socks from 50 gram skeins, but it's on like only merino here. There's no nylon. It's very nice and squishy, but no nylon, so I I won't be knitting socks from it. It just yeah. <laughs> I usually knit socks only from yarn that um, have some nylon added to it for strength, because it would be a pity if I knitted. Uh, like a whole pair of socks and then they will fail in a few days but I always say that don't I anyway they are gorgeous and uh, next up is a booth by uh, Asita Krebs and her brand is CD Spind and first up I brought this with me this is her logo and it's a uh, blue faced leicester silk and cashmere blend so it's like mm, very very soft and it's as i said decay weight which means oh yeah did i say this is fingering this is around 200 meters per 50 grams and this is 100 gram skein and it's 70% below face, Leicester 20% silk and 10% cashmere. And it's around 230 meters. Oh, it's not 100 grams, it's 115 grams. And yeah. So it says decay, but needles are from 4 to 5 millimeters, which makes it closer to worsted, I'd say. I'm thinking about the hat from this and you know I love purples and I think I would look good in this color but it's not it um, Asita she um, sells also spinning fibers and uh, spindles I saw some really clever spindles on her booth uh, she had very beautiful supported spindles if you're interested but she also had a drop spindle, which, um, how do I say it? Just a moment. Let's, let's take this an, as an example. Instead of a whorl, it has a tiny bobbin that is removable. And you could also buy like separate bobbins. So when you spin, you wrap your yarn on this tiny bobbin and you already have it on the bobbin and you're free to do whatever you like with it. It's not like you have to uh, wind it uh, again. It's very clever. If I did not have my spinning wheel, I would surely buy one because, and some bobbins too. It just, I'm much more of a, a kiwi girl right now. So I thought, no, uh, but I know uh, the address for her web page, so <laughs> I might be tempted, who knows. Mm. So uh, I bought some fiber, of course. And just look at this. Just have a look. Isn't this amazing? And I'm seeing Navajo Fly yarn that would, again, keep keep the sections of the colors I think it would be amazing and this is um, a hand dyed uh, top and it's 70 percent I can't talk today sorry it's 70 percent uh, blue faced Leicester and 70 per yeah it's 140 <laughs> percent sorry and 30% of sea cell um, 
which she explained to me it's a kind of a seaweed made into a spinning fiber and I believe it's these parts. They look a bit like silk and I can see those uh, paler strands, they are shiny and they are also quite slippery like silk. But I thought it would be very interesting to spin with seaweed and I love Blue Faced Lester too and it's very soft, it's very nice. And the colorway is, um, oh, it's the name of a plant and I don't know how to pronounce it in English. In, um, in German it's lupinen, which is lupine. You know, those flowers that have, that they come in two colors. It's either purples or yellows. I, I'd say that the wild ones are more often yellow and the ones that you keep in your garden are more, more commonly uh, purple. But that's just my experience. This actually reminds me of an iris, iris flower, you know, with the purple uh, purple uh, petals and this yellows in the middle. It just spoke to me. So this was from CD Spint. Oh, and she's also a designer, if you're interested. Uh, she will be having um, a new pattern soon, as soon as she translates it to English. Uh, you can find her on, uh, on Ravelry. And for now she has a shawl uh, patterns and hats. Possibly also mittens, but I saw the um, design sweater and it's a really nice uh, pullover with uh, shaping for the waist. And yeah, it's it's I, I believe it's fingering weight, and it's um like if you if you're looking for something simple without too many decorations, that's the way to go. I'm. Uh, actually thinking about knitting it but it's not out yet so she was too busy uh, before the festival to to sit and translate it but let's hope it will be out soon uh, that's not all there was also a booth with soaps and other lovely fragrant things so uh, this is um, by creamy stuff and it's a natural, uh, it's soap with made from natural ingredients and it's uh, with lemongrass added and it's, it smells amazing. And on the booth I saw after, because I was, I was buying this on Sunday morning, I saw that she had uh, like uh, the box with, with those soaps and samples so you can smell them and uh, she had various fragrances in rows and the row with this one was almost empty. This was the last one and, and I said that I'm not surprised this is just divine. So I just bought me a little soap. And it's amazing. Mm, yeah. Last thing, I believe, it's this one. And it's also uh, based in Switzerland. It's Wunderwolle. And I bought, of course, a skein of sock yarn. She has uh, the most amazing subtle colorways. And there, are, there were many I really wanted but I decided I will pick only one. So this is it, it's sock yarn, which means 75% wool and 25% nylon. It's uh, 420 meters per 100 grams. And it's machine washable. Um, the colorway is in German, it's Betören der Duft. And she was explaining to me what it meant. So, of course, duft is um, the, s the fragrance or smell. But I did not really get the Beturender uh, part. But it's obviously some amazing smell. <laughs> and it looks like that. 
C A. I really love the combination of colors. I think I have something similar from um, Bloom and Fiber Arts. Where is it? I had it somewhere here. Sorry, something fell. No, that's not it. Oh yeah. This is a little bit similar, but still different. It has more uh, more colors here, but yeah, I just I just uh, am drawn to this kind of color combinations. So this is my haul from a Swiss Wolle Festival, and uh, we, like. Considering how little time I had to shop, it's kind of a lot, I'd say. <laughs> um, so this is it for the, strictly speaking, crafty stuff. Now I will just talk a little bit about the festival. Uh, I have some pictures and some videos. I was supposed to have more videos, but uh, one video got lost. So, unfortunately, there is no overview of the whole festival. I just have some pictures and uh, tiny videos. What was funny, on Friday when we went, on Friday evening, when we went to set up the booth, of course we took uh, our son with us because, yeah, <laughs> we don't have anyone to stay with him. And I, I borrowed his little stool that he stands on when he washes his hands, so he reaches uh, the sink and I borrowed it to put stuff on it on the booth and he just sat on it and put it next to my uh, spinning wheel and started treadling, you know, just like that <laughs> and I have it on the video, I will put it here, but it was so like did you learn to do that? <laughs> uh, so yeah, he probably observed what I'm doing when I'm spinning. He usually doesn't let me spin much because he wants to play with it with the wheel himself. But anyway, uh, that was kind of adorable. Most of the time he was not really not helping because he was a bored two and a half year old uh, boy. But uh, yeah, that moment was really cute. Other than that, uh, I met so many wonderful people. It was, it's this amazing thing about yarn festivals that you just meet people who, who think alike, who are interested in similar things and yeah, and oh yeah, and I saw so many gorgeous knitted garments. It was just, I was sitting at my booth and I was like, <laughs> it was really wonderful. Some people were really amazing. Um, so I was also happy I could uh, like personally meet uh, people from whom I bought some yarn or fiber. They're, uh, yeah, it was so much fun and I uh, hope to like meet them again would be great and also thank you so much my dear viewers all of you who came and said hello I was so happy to meet you it's it's wonderful it's really great and and just thank you it means so much and there were more of you than I expected actually so yay <laughs> wonderful also, um, Anna, who uh, won the prize from the Unicorn Along um, that I was like uh, announcing last week in the last episode, uh, she made that beautiful unicorn, like just uh, not from a pattern, just uh, from her head, which I think is amazing, and I couldn't do that. And then she brought the unicorn and I could uh, yeah, see it with my own eyes and then uh, she and my unicorn could sit together at my booth, booth for some time 
and they looked extremely cute together, I must tell you. So Anna told me also more about her project that she used um, her own hand dyed yarn dyed with natural plants, like there are not unnatural plants, with natural dyes from plants. <laughs> and uh, she used some of her hand spun as well so it was just yeah amazing and uh, what else what else um, i was quite tired on the especially no both days i was tired <laughs> first day was really long because the festival started at 9 in the morning but we had to be earlier to finish setting up the booth and it lasted till 7 p.m. which means yeah a lot of time there and Sunday was shorter it was from half past 9 till 7 uh, not 7 till 5 p.m. so it was shorter but I was already like mm -hmm. And it's not like it was um, unpleasant, it was just very energy draining to do that. But at the same time, it was fun, it was enjoyable. So I'm very, very happy that I took part in a festival as a vendor and I hope to do it again sometime. Mm. Yeah, and... I'm still a bit overwhelmed <laughs> and I did not eat much. I actually ate like sandwiches, some apple and I wouldn't be surprised if I lost some weight in that weekend. <laughs> but it's fine because I gained weight, gained weight in Japan so it will balance itself somehow. Okay, uh, I think that that is it for uh, this week. Thank you so much again to everyone who bought my yarn, who looked at my yarn, who talked to me, uh, stopped by. I, I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you around somewhere again. Um, and I wish you a lovely week. Happy knitting. And we will see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Okay, guys, we are setting our booth. And the meowing you see you hear in the background is my son. <laughs> Hello, so it's day two of Swiss Wooler Festival. And you can see that my kitty cat is here with me. It's just before the opening, so it's a bit quiet in here. But yeah, I'm excited again. Last day was amazing. And um, exhausting at the same time. So we will see how it goes today. Ludzie też zawieźli mi ten Staś się kręcić. Staś się sam się nauczył kręcić.